Okay, welcome back. Let's finish off chapter five. So chapter five was on right angle trigonometry, and now we're gonna cover application questions regarding how you would solve for a side or an angle using sine, cos, or tan. So I am gonna turn off the uh, video feed and just stick to the uh, slides today, but uh, let's get going and talking on the formulas and reviewing those before I do that. So. Just remember that there are three ratios that we introduced last time. Those included sine, cosine, and tangent. And we can summarize those ratios formulas using the famous acronym SOKATOA. So your objective in the questions that you're going to see today is going to be which ratio should you use to solve the particular question. This lesson is broken into three parts. The first part will be to solve for an angle, or another angle possibly. The second part is going to be a small break from the main theme where I introduce uh, the concept of degrees, minutes, and seconds for fractions of angles. And then the third part of the lesson will be when you want to use the trig ratio sine, cos, or tan to solve for an unknown side when you're given other information that includes angles. So let's get going on those examples. I highly recommend that you pause the examples as we go one at a time, try them on your own, and then of course you can check and see what I did. The answers are in the book and on the slides that I present. So let's get going. So let's look at a bunch of examples where you would solve for an unknown angle using either sine, cosine, or tangent. For these exercises, I recommend uh, that you flip over to pages 15 to 18 to get the theory and the examples that are in the notes but uh, the examples and the exercises that I'm gonna cover begin on page 19. So we're gonna take a few of them from this page, including exercise one. So in this exercise here, you are asked to find the angles theta and phi. Now, it doesn't matter which one you solve for first, but uh, I'll go with theta first because theta is alphabetically before phi in the Greek alphabet. So how might you do that? Well, simply identify that the sides that are relative to theta and make your decision about which ratio is appropriate. So I'm just gonna remove the labeling there. So relative to theta, we have opposite. Remember, O with a box means opposite when I write it, and instead of using different colors and wasting time. And this is the adjacent. So if I write down Sokatoa up here, maybe I should write a little bit lower, Sokatoa. I'm not gonna write this every time because it might just drag on the video too much. Anyway, uh, you can see that OA are the uh, sides that are given relative to the angle theta. So OA is tan, so we could write here tan theta is 53.4 meters divided by 117 meters. And really you don't have to type this on your calculator. Um, immediately. I don't care what the decimal value is. I do matter, it does matter that the uh, meters do cancel. What I prefer you do is just uh, take the tan inverse of that ratio immediately and that's how you solve for an angle. So, oops, my stylus is getting a little bit friendly with me today. Here we go. So if you do that on your calculator to uh, two decimal places, you are going to get the answer 24.53 degrees. Now, you could solve for the other uh, the other angle there, phi, or phi if you want, using a trig ratio. But you should always take advantage of the 180 degree rule for a triangle. So remember that all triangle, uh, the angles in a triangle add up to 180 degrees. So I simply can say that phi is equal to 180, that's an 8 there, and what are the other two angles? Well, we know theta is 24.53, but we also know that there's a 90 degree angle there. So this is a lot of writing, and of course you could streamline that by just doing 90 minus. So I've written down the calculation right here, and you're gonna get theta is 65.47 degrees. And of course, uh, make sure you present your answer nicely because that's important in terms of what I like to see. So here's another example. 
just pause for a moment if you'd like to try this question. I encourage you to really just uh, take that time. I mean, the video might be half an hour when I finalize it or 40 minutes, but I do expect you to spend about double the time of the video to be working on these questions. Um, that's how I like to do things in person also. So let's take a look here. Relative to the angle theta, we have the adjacent. Let me just put an A there. And we have the hypotenuse over here, H. So that's cosine. So cos theta is uh, adjacent. So that's six feet, two inches over six feet, eight inches. You could deal with this one by converting either to feet or inches because right now dividing these doesn't really work in your head very nicely. So I'll just take the time there to convert them all to inches. I like, I prefer inches because you don't have to have decimals and when you do have decimals, you're rounding potentially. See here, if you take two and divide by 12, you're gonna get two twelfths or one sixth. Now one sixth is gonna be some repeating decimal that you can never write forever here. So that's why it's just better to go to inches. So that's 74. I'm gonna put inches with an IN here. And it's deliberate because uh, the other one's 80. Because I wanna show you that the inches cancel. Remember this is a ratio and a ratio has no units when you're talking about trigonometry especially. So uh, cos inverse of that. I don't actually care what 74 divided by 80 is as a decimal. I do care though that I can type it on my calculator and figure out uh, that ratio and that inverse ratio. So that would be the cosine. In this case, that would be 22.33 degrees. So there's a couple of examples under your belt now, and hopefully you get into the right groove here in completing some of these other ones. This example shows uh, a set of two triangles. We call this a compound figure. And the idea is that you want to solve for all four angles here. However, though, the, uh, the order of the angles that you do work with is important because the upper triangle has more information given. So you, you always want to work on the side of the figure that has the most information. And in practice, it's good to know at least three pieces of information on a triangle. So let's take a look here on the figure, uh, maybe just a nice separate figure to deal with here. I'm gonna solve for X first on the upper triangle since this triangle has more information. So relative to X, this is the opposite side and this would be the adjacent side of the right angle triangle. The ratio that we're gonna to use to solve for X is tan. So tan of X is the opposite over the adjacent. So that's uh, 42 over 192. And if you take the inverse tangent of that ratio, you'll get the answer for X. So in these early examples here, you'll see that I'm showing you the step where I write tan inverse. I don't care if you write this step in practice. What I do care is that you show me the first step where you actually use one of the ratios. And then the final step here where you present whatever the angle is. So X is equal to 12.34 degrees. And uh, the question says to two decimal places, so I'll just stick to that theme. Now, I should mention here, let's say over here, you had, instead of a four, you had a five or a three, that's fine. I'm not gonna pick on you for uh, up or down by one on the last uh, place value that I'm looking for. So how would you get Y? Well, I can just squeeze Y in here. And Y is gonna equal, well, I can use 180 degrees in this triangle. See, all these angles here add up to 180. However, since we have a right angle over here, instead of using 180, we could be economical and just say that Y is 90 degrees minus X. That does save you a little bit of time. And I do like you to report a step like that, even though it seems kind of uh, easy. So anyway, we have here 90 degrees minus 12.34 uh, degrees. So if you subtract those quantities, you're gonna get 77.66 degrees. So that's halfway in the question, sort of. I'm just gonna block that off a little bit. So what next? Well, we wanna migrate into this triangle here. 
but we need some other information because well, we only have two numbers here. We have the uh, measure of the 90 degree angle and we have the hypotenuse which is 283 meters. So it would be beneficial to find something else on the triangle prior to finding Z or W. And that would be the hypotenuse of the previous triangle being the leg of this triangle. So how would you solve for that value? Well, I can just uh, do the Pythagorean theorem there. So I've done this calculation earlier. This is the longest side of the upper triangle. So if you take 192 squared and you take 42 squared and square root them, you're going to get an answer of to three decimal places, 196.540. That's meters. Perhaps I can't squeeze it in here very nicely. I'll try. 196.540 meters. Okay, so now it's a matter of just going for uh, Z and W. I'll just go for Z first. Perhaps we can just uh, change the color here. Give it a little, spice it up a little bit here. So we can do uh, relative to Z. I'm going to get Z here. So on this triangle, this is the hypotenuse. And this is the adjacent. That's an A there. So that's cosine. So let's go over here. Cos Z is the adjacent, which is 196.540. Now there are meters here, but I mentioned earlier that if the units are the same, I'm not going to get too concerned about you writing the units. Let's cross them out. So cos inverse of that fraction is going to be 46.01. Now in the notes, I think it says 46.02, but uh, the notes that you got for this course are actually the draft of a textbook that will be produced in the future. So I had to uh, really just push out a revised edition as quickly as possible under the constraints that we have during this uh, strange situation that we're in regarding distance learning. So anyway, how do you get W? Well, you could do 180 on this triangle or you can just remember that that's 90. So Z and W have to add up to 90. So I'll, I'll just get uh, 90 minus Z here to finalize the uh, question. So that's 90 degrees minus 46.01. And that gives us a solution for W of 43.99 degrees. Now, there's a lot of numbers on this slide. So I am going to take a moment and just pre check everything and then we can move on so my notes look good hopefully uh, you got the same answer and it wasn't too much of a stress for you so the next topic that we're gonna look at is uh, degrees minutes and seconds degrees minutes and seconds is a way of breaking down fractions of an angle and its relevance is in what you would see for example in surveying now if you were to look up the uh, latitude and longitude for Toronto, you would see actually some notation that looks like this. And if you, you can see this on any uh, geographical website, I'm just going to make up some numbers here like this. This is not the latitude of Toronto, but uh, 14 degrees, 13 and 17. You might see something like that. Um, these units here are not feet and inches. Those are minutes and seconds. So how does it work well a degree has 60 minutes and a minute has 60 seconds it's just like time so if you turn to page 23 there's an exercise there where you can practice this and what we'll do right now is actually uh, one of these questions let's do uh, the first one so I'm just gonna do a here although you definitely can try the other ones as well I've just stuck them here so that you can uh, try them maybe if you pause the video so we're gonna take uh, this degrees, minutes, and seconds and convert it into decimal degrees. So the way that you do that is, well, degrees are degrees. So that 7 is still 7. But 54 minutes needs to be converted into degrees. Now, if I wanted you to convert 54 minutes into hours, you would divide by 60. And that's what you do here as well. 
But when it comes to seconds, how many seconds are in an hour? Well, the same number of seconds that are in a degree. So you would divide by 60, and you would divide by 60 again. So 60 squared. You could write 3600 here. You could write a 3600 right here. I just prefer, I just prefer uh, to write 60 squared. So I'm going to grab my calculator. I don't want to cheat here. I want to actually see that I do get the same answer because it's always nice to check your work. So let's see here. It's too bad I can't display my calculator on the screen, but I did get the following. I got 7.903. Uh, I didn't cheat here, okay? Now that three went on forever. It's a repeating decimal, but I'm going to put the approximate equal sign here because we're asked to evaluate uh, the conversion to the nearest thousandth of a degree. So that's pretty much it in terms of the uh, process. Just remember that this is a template and it's always the same. So you could use that uh, routine to convert. Um, I will ask you to do one conversion on the assignment and it's only worth one mark. So basically, if you get it right, you get it right. <laughs> one mark, okay. Let's go the other way. Let's turn a decimal value of degrees into degrees, minutes, and seconds. There is a feature on your calculator that can do this for you if you're using a scientific calculator. If you're using your phone, probably not. So if you look on your calculator, you might find a button called DMS. It'll be somewhere where the uh, sine, cos, and tan buttons are. Or maybe the button looks like this. It has like some quotation marks. And if you have this button, you feel free to use it. It definitely will cut out some time. But I will do the first example without any cheating. I'm going to go through the motions here and uh, make sure that I do get the right answer so that we can safely say that everything is good with this process. So how do we do the conversion? Well, what you want to do firstly is kind of like make a, uh, I wouldn't say a tree, but I want to just take 38 degrees and put it in the bank because you know what? That number is the whole number of degrees. Now what you can do is just underneath or on the side, take the, the fractional part and multiply by 60 minutes because the whole part will tell you how many minutes there are. So 0 0.652 times 60 is 39.12 de uh, minutes. So now the 39 minutes, that's minutes, sorry. The 39 minutes goes right here. So that's in the bank, so to speak. I can take the decimal part, which is 0 0.12, and multiply by 60 seconds. Remember, that's not inches, that's seconds. So if I take away the 39 on my calculator, and multiply by 60, I get roughly 7. And I'm going to put approximately 7 seconds. So it's 7 point something. It's 7.2 actually. But uh, when you present the answer, since it is a single digit, make sure you put the 0. See how there's a 0 here? So make sure that you do that correctly. Feel free to try the other two on your own. And of course, you can pause the video and check the answers here. A neat little comment is for this one, notice there's a zero, meaning a, a full degree was not realized. That's why there is no degrees here in the answer, but simply minutes and seconds. In these next two examples, I'm going, I'm going to use a couple of right angle triangles to help you practice using degrees, minutes, and seconds in your calculations. So in this example, we're solving for the angle theta down here. Now, if we label the sides relative to theta, that would be the opposite and this would be the adjacent so that's tan you see tan popping up a lot in these examples and the reason is is that if you think about slope slope is rise over run and slope is very common in construction and because of that tan is also disproportionately uh, represented in calculations so in this case, we want to just take the inverse tan of that. So if we take that inverse tan, we get, uh, I'm just going to write that down for a second. We get an angle which is in decimal form. So that angle will be, and I have it over here somewhere, that'll be uh, 28.3. 
3.330. I should put more decimals, but when you look at the question, notice it says to the nearest minute. A minute is 1 60th of a degree. So 1 60th is a lot uh, larger than 1 1,000th, which is what we have here. So even two decimal places would have been okay. In this case though, what you wanna do is break that into degrees and minutes. So we know the answer is 28 degrees for sure. And we're only arguing about uh, the calculation for the minutes. So we need a question mark there. So what you can do is take the decimal part, which is 0 0.330 and multiply by 60 minutes. When you do that, you're gonna get roughly 20 minutes. It's, it's 19 point something, and I don't really uh, report the number here. It's 19.8. So we can round that up to 20. And there it is, an answer with degrees and minutes. So when you do your surveying, at least you can uh, have some experience in this course practicing that. So one more example, sometimes you get uh, questions where you might be asked to round to something awkward, like the nearest 10 seconds. So the question really here is to have some fun with how you might interpret um, the desired precision. So in this case, uh, relative to the angle shown, this is opposite. And of course, that's the longest side there, that's the hypotenuse. So the ratio that we're gonna use here is sine. So sine of that Greek letter phi or phi is 12.6 feet over 87.9 feet. We can take the inverse sign to solve for that angle. I've done that already and when I did that I put lots of decimals here because when I see seconds I do at least four decimal places. So if it's a little bit excessive on my part don't worry too much just uh, three or four decimals should take you there. I like four decimals at least though when I see that so when I see seconds. So I did that actually. <laughs> Maybe a bit too much. You know, I'll use the exam I'll use the answer down here and just kind of make sure that we box off what we get. So we do need the eight. We got the eight, that's good. So let's take the uh, decimal part here, 0 0.24144, and multiply by 60 minutes. And when you do that, you get 14 point, I got here 486. And that would be in minutes. So there's the 14. I can underline these as we do them. See, you have a 14 minutes here. The issue now is to just finish off by taking the decimal part, which is 0.486. Now it's to the nearest 10 seconds. So think about that. Is this closer to 0, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50? One number when you multiply by 60. So I'm pretty sure you can see it's close to uh, 0.5 of a, of a minute, so that would be uh, 30 seconds. And that's what I got to. I, I actually got 29, 29.17 uh, seconds. And I'm just gonna highlight this in blue. It's the nearest 10 seconds, so that's why you see a 30 here. So I just rounded that to 30, okay? So the answer is consistent with the uh, calculations. So that's good news. Uh, enough of the uh, degrees, minutes, and seconds. I'd like to uh, now move on to the next topic, which is how you use angles and other information on triangles to solve for missing side lengths. So how do you do that? Well, for these questions, it turns out that you actually just use sine, cos, and tan, but you don't use the inverse of them. You just use the actual direct function. So let's take a look at the first example here. And it's uh, solving for the height of a right angle triangle. It says you're finding the side X in one step, easier case. So you're gonna see that a lot with, uh, with this book here. Now the author, the primary author of the notes, really likes to uh, in inform the reader of what's an easy question or a medium or a hard question. So yeah, this question pretty much is, uh, if you're playing basketball, it's a layup. So let's do that here. We want to label the uh, side lengths relative to the angle. So that's opposite and that's adjacent. I realize the answer is down here, but I still want to go through the calculations with you. So that would be tan. So if I write here tan 35, 
that's going to equal the opposite, which is x over 18. Um, whenever the variable is on top, it's the easier of the two cases, as the author has mentioned here. But what that means here mathematically is you just multiply those two quantities. It's, uh, if you're familiar with cross multiplying, that's what I'm doing here. So you either multiply when the variable is on top, or you divide if the variable is on the, on the bottom. So that would be 18. Perhaps I can just squeeze the tan in like that. And if you evaluate that to two decimal places, you should get 12.60 centimeters. So that would be considered a very easy question. I don't think I have one this easy on the assignment, but still, it's uh, pretty much knowledge, hopefully, in terms of uh, categories of questions. Now this one says the messier case. By messier, it means that the uh, variable in the previous example was on the top, perhaps in the next example, the variable's on the bottom, and you'll see that with this calculation. So in this case, we have, uh, rel relative to the angle there, we have the adjacent, and of course, this is the hypotenuse. So we have here a cosine ratio. So cosine of 19 degrees, 12 minutes, we'll deal with that shortly, is 65.37 over y. So when the variable is on the bottom, what you can do, it's really cheap. The fastest way I've patterned this out is to just switch those two. It's kind of like you're taking advantage of cross multiplication. So that would be y equals 65.37 over cos 19.12 degree, uh, sorry, 19 degrees, 12 minutes. Now, uh, that's actually a very common mistake is someone will write 19.12. Don't do that, okay? I almost fell into that trap myself and I'm not gonna edit the video. I want you to see that I made that mistake so that you don't make that mistake. But how do you fix it? Well, some of your calculators that do have the DMS button on them, you can just type it the way you see it if you figure out how to use the button. If you don't know how to use the button, go on the side somewhere and just do 19 plus 12 out of 60. It's the conversion that we did earlier, and there's no seconds here. Notice that uh, 12 out of 60 is a nice number. It's actually one fifth, so that's 0.2. And it's not approximate, it is exactly 19.2. So um, I'll just uh, write that over here. I need to squeeze it a little bit here. So that's 65.37 over cos. 19.2 degrees. Now the answer is already presented, so I'm gonna cheat a little bit here. If you're wondering why did I put the answers on the slides I'm working on, I, I just find that uh, it's nice to have a prompt to look at. Um, I really just want to authentically just work through the example as I'm teaching it and discussing it with you. So to review, when the variables on the top, you just multiply them. When the variable's on the bottom, you still have that pattern there where you switch them. So let's move on to the next example. Oh goodness, here, look. This is not a right angle triangle. This is uh, something else. Well, if you're familiar a little bit with uh, what roofs uh, possible uh, shapes are, one is called the famous gabled roof, which is symmetric. So a gabled roof would have a line of symmetry right down the middle. And that gives you this beautiful, whoops, well, if I can draw it beautifully, a right angle triangle. So once you extract that right angle triangle, the height can be displaced over here. And on the length here, I'll just do some funny labeling like that. How much is that? Well, it's half of 26, it's 13 feet. So we can write down Sokotoa here relative to 20 this is opposite and this is adjacent so that's tan so tan of 20 is going to be h over 13. so is the variable on the top or the bottom well it's on the top when the variable is on the top it's the easier case so we're just gonna multiply those together and you'll get h is 13 times tan of 20 so 
13 of uh, times 10 of 20. Let me do that on my calculator. Okay, 13, 10, 20 is 4.732. 4.732 feet. Um, you, you can quickly see here that that's close to 0.75. So you know that it's going to be uh, probably 9 inches because 9 out of 12 is 3 quarters. Uh, if you're not sure about that, just go on the side here and do 0 0.732 times 12 and yeah it's nine it's uh just shy of nine so if i take away four and i multiply by 12 it's 8.8 .8. 8.8 inches so definitely the answer is going to be closest to four feet nine inches as per the answer shown so that's good Okay, so this next example is the uh, second last example that I'm going to cover today. And it's a compound triangle diagram where we want to solve for the angle theta located up here. So somehow you need to migrate through the diagram this way, so to speak, and get to the triangle here. And that's the strategy that I'll use. So let's take a look at this on a separate nice uh, diagram here. What we can do is talk about three triangles. We can talk about triangle number one, triangle number two, and then triangle number three. If I take a look at triangle number one, I could draw this uh, separately. I'll just do that over here. And the main thing that I want to point out is that this side length here is going to be A. And, uh, and then for the triangle number two, I'm going to call that side length over here B. And then when you move into the final triangle, the overall height here, which I'll just label there with an H, will get us toward the angle theta. So I'm not going to uh, put in the numerical values here on these two triangles since the numbers are given. Of course, uh, we do have this given and this angle given. So that would be the sine ratio. So we can say here that sine of 28 is going to be A over 6.380. I'll come back to solving for A in a second. If you go back to the second triangle, B, you're given the angle and also the hypotenuse, and you want to solve for B. So that's opposite and hypotenuse. So that's also sine. So that would be sine of 21 degrees is B over 9.112. So if we go back to uh, a comparison of the two types of questions that we see in this last topic, either the variables on the top or the bottom. In the case with the variables on the top, you just multiply those two numbers. So if you multiply those two numbers, you're going to get A is, now I put lots of decimals here, I got 2.9952, that's in meters. For the A length B here also, since it's on top as a variable, you just multiply the sine 21 degrees by 9.112. If you do that, you'll get a value for B, which is uh, 3.2654 meters. Now that you have A and B, you can find the height of the overall triangle in item number three. So we can finish the question off down here. I'll just draw a little divider there. So for the third triangle, we know that the height is A plus B. So if you add A and B together, you're going to get, uh, now you can keep more accuracy on your calculator. You get 6.2606. If you add actually the numbers without rounding these two guys here, because these are approximate, it's actually closer to uh, a 7. There's a 7 there, but it doesn't really matter because we're going to the nearest minute anyway. So that's H. Relative to theta, this is really the last part of the process. So Relative to theta, we have opposite and we have adjacent. Okay, there's opposite and adjacent. So we're going to use uh, tan to finish off this question. So tan of theta is opposite, which is uh, 3.875. I guess that should put the meters there. And we're going to divide by what we got for the height, which is 6.2606. If you uh, take the tan inverse of that, theta is going to be 
31 uh, full degrees and a fractional part which is 0 0.755. Because the question wants to go to the nearest minute, take the decimal part here which is 0 0.755 uh, and multiply by 60 minutes and you're going to get roughly 45 minutes. So then the answer finally is that theta is 31 degrees and 45 minutes. And that's the final answer to this question. There's another one in the notes like that and I encourage you to try it. Furthermore, uh, I will give a question very similar to this one. It's probably closer to the next example and it'll be on your assignment. But it'll be three compound right angle triangles and uh, if your assignment's at a 10, I think I'm going to make it worth about four marks because there's lots of steps. So one more example and then we'll wrap it up. Okay, here's our final example and uh, it's a big one. Now this is the last chapter uh, question for chapter five that I'll cover. But in chapter six, there's even a worse question compared to this one. So hopefully uh, you get your head around this one. It's not a hard question, it's just a lot of bookkeeping. So in this question, you're asked to solve for four quantities, A, B, I'll just check them off here, that one over there, A, C, and then B, D, and C, D, which are actually just the two lengths that collectively add up to 150 feet. So this question could represent, for example, two angles of elevation when you're looking at a building, and let's say that's a building there. So you're trying to figure out some relative distances. Now, that question actually does appear in the next chapter. So we're going to take our time with this one. Uh, the order that you're asked to answer the question actually fits really nicely to a strategy that I would use. Of course, you can answer them in various orders, but it's a kind of deliberate by the author how, it, how it's asked. So we're going to solve for AB first. Now, if you look at AB, AB can be part of the overall triangle. See this large triangle here? Because I'm using these fancy colors, I don't have to draw them separately. If I was in the classroom, I'd be drawing these as separate triangles on the board. So we want to find AB. So that's AB right there. So what I'll do is I'll just use the overall triangle, recognizing that this is opposite and this is adjacent. So that's tan. I gotta squeeze them in here nicely. So that's tan of 32 is AB over 150. Uh, that's 150 feet. Okay, if you multiply these two because the variable is on top, you're going to get AB is, I'll put extra digits here and just say 93.730. The answer says two decimal places, but for now that's fine. Um, that's part one. Now, how do you get uh, some other information? Well, we can go and get AC now. And AC is found, for example, you could use cosine or Pythagorean theorem. Because now you have this length and this length, you could get the Pythagorean theorem involved here to get that length. I'll use the cosine ratio just so that you can practice because it's good to practice these ratios. So that's AC over there. So I'm just going to try to draw a little divider for each of the parts here. Not the straightest lines, but it's all good. So here we're going to use cos of 32 is um, 150 feet over AC. In this case, notice that the variable is on the bottom. And I talked about how you can do a little uh, switcheroo here, switch them up. So then AC would equal 150 divided by cos 32. And if you evaluate that to uh, three decimal places, as I've done, I got uh, 176. And I got a decimal part of 0.877. That's all in feet. I'm just trying to write a little bit nicer here. So that's AC. Now we're going to work our way into some more of the triangles. So I'm going to go for the length uh, BD next. So I'm going to just delete the purple stuff here. Maybe we'll switch it up with a different color and use orange. 
Okay, so let's talk about this triangle in here. Remember, we do know this height here is still 93 point something. I'm just going to put an arrow there. That's still 93.730. Uh, so we could use the uh, tangent ratio to get BD. Here's BD. Remember, BD is just from here to here. Or you can say DB if you like. So I'm going to use tan of 48. Lots of tans. Lots of tans today. So tan of 48 is going to be 93.730. That's supposed to be a 3 there. Divided by the BD length. The variable's on the bottom, so I'll do a little switcheroo again. So BD is 93.730 over 10, 48. And when you divide those out on your calculator, you get a nice little answer. Oops. You're going to get a nice little answer here of 84.395. I think in the answer key, it's off by one hundredth there. But go with my answer on the screen. If you do your homework questions and you, and you notice that you're off by a digit at the end, up or down by one, don't worry too much. Um, but the uh, co-author of the notes here definitely uh, um, and I would need to proofread, of course, the draft of notes that have been presented to you. So what about CD? Well, I'm not going to use any crazy trigonometry here. Look, this is 150, and I want to find out this much, which is uh, CD. So let's just use 150 minus the other one. So CD is uh, 150 feet minus BD and I'll just put an arrow, oh that's a really wonky looking arrow there let's make it nicer so if you do 150 minus 84 you're gonna get roughly 65 I'm just gonna double check my notes here I got I got closer to 65.61 um, and that's in uh, feet so what about the final answers well just take all of these numbers here that I've highlighted and I want you to round them to two decimal places, and that will be the uh, final answer. That's not the prettiest uh, presentation. Ooh, that is really obscuring the number there. So anyway, I got my little shortcuts here with the uh, PowerPoint to uh, reveal the truth, to reveal the answers to you. So there you go. Let's uh, wrap it up here with a nice little uh, presentation. Well, that is not looking too good. So we have AB is 93.73. Next one is AC, which is 176.88. Of course, these are in feet. And then you have BD which is 84.39. I should say 84.4. Uh, okay, this is funny. I'll put 84.40, but I should mention here that this number is actually closer to 0 0.3945. So it's not a big deal. If you're off a little bit, nobody's gonna bug you too much. And that does ruin my answer a little bit here. <laughs> so I will just put, uh, 65.60 that's fine and I'll just put here a happy face so don't pick on me too much there okay so I'm gonna just uh, the rounding here really does ruin a little bit so I am gonna make that a zero here and I'll just make that a four oh because you know what life's too short to worry about things like that anyway that's enough of that example hopefully it hasn't given you a headache like it gave me at the end there Anyway, so what's next on the menu? Well, next week I'm going to cover the uh, last uh, lesson that I have with you. As you know, I am teaching you for the first six weeks, and then there will be another professor covering the second half of the semester. So chapter six is basically just 20 medium 
to hard to really hard questions and I'm gonna sample a whole bunch of them the video next week's probably gonna be the longest of the videos because I'm gonna try to do lots of the questions and uh, yeah don't worry too much you're gonna get a tough assignment from me probably next week probably the toughest one of the lot and uh, you know no easy questions next week so yeah let's see what you do with it I uh, hope you have a lovely week and if you have questions you know how to find me drop me an email post a comment on the video if you like and take care of yourselves thank you